what is going on what is up everybody welcome back to the channel if you're new here subscribe we're just gonna get right into it all right so i got a call it's friday so i was hoping it wasn't anything crazy but we got a call for uh no cool so it's it's summer hope you guys are staying hydrated like tito said in our HVAC Nights uh, live stream. He can't. He popped in. He does that from time to time. Uh, Tito vlogs. Hopefully, I can get him on the podcast eventually. We've been talking, but anyway, um, got the call. It's a Friday, so I'm hoping it's something crazy. Uh, just came up here, set up the ladder and everything, and I want to show you like the first few things that I do when I walk up to a call, right? Because I've gotten that comment, why are you wasting all your time doing all this other stuff when it was just a bad capacitor or bad this, bad that, whatever. Because you need, I mean, Chris says it best, big picture diagnosis, right? I'm not, I'm not at that level where he's at. I still got to get in, get out, kind of, you know, get approval, stuff like that. Um, and it's a little bit different now than it was five, 10 years ago when, when, when everything was approved, like instantly. But I uh, like to see it running when I get here to see what is it doing? What is it not doing? Um, and then shut off the power and then do a diagnosis and all that. I want to see what it's doing and try to catch it, right? So I come up here, this is the other unit that they have. So the first thing I do is I check. Okay, cool. This one is working. It's hot. I don't have to do anything to this one. And I already probed up, the MPMX is great for these kinds of calls. I, I absolutely love it. I'll get into some of the stuff. Uh, come over here, our fan is running, right? So I still have to check a few things, but usually I'm like, okay, uh-oh, uh, did our compressor overheat? Is it off on internal overload? You know, things like that. So fan's running. I hooked up though, and we do have, I don't think you guys can see, I can't see with my glasses. But we do have over like 250 PSI, so I know it's not low on charge or anything like that. This has a manual reset. So, I mean, I checked my pressures first and then I'm like, okay, did it trip? Do we have a high head, dirty coil? And then uh, right now I'm gonna get into here. We're gonna kind of go further with it. So I already kind of took off the screws here. And again, a visual. So. I don't think I've replaced the motor on this one. There's one in the box. I'll go get a, a strap and mount it with my drill. So we'll take care of that. But the fan's running fine. I'm not here for that. So I can see discoloring and that is probably to my compressor. So this is a rim unit. So this is a rim unit. We have our electrical right here and our compressor on the other side. You have to get in through the top. Now we have contactors, we have a uh, transformer, like I said, capacitors. Uh, all of that is here basically. I believe this has electric heat on this side over here, but just visually looking because I hate, like, I hate just changing parts and not knowing what happened. So, Maybe our contactor was not making good connections. So we have this here, discolored. And I believe it goes up and through there. So we're gonna grab our pouch and bring it down here so you guys can see. I've had a lot of questions on this. This is essentially, I'll see if I can find it. It's probably on Amazon. It was sent to me over from uh, TikTok. Uh, they wanted me to review it. I actually kind of like it, so it stays in here. It's it's a little smaller, but it does the trick. Uh, some people have asked me about it. The only thing is it's a basic meter. It's like 50 bucks. It does not do inrush, but it does. It, I can check voltage, capacitors, and something's trying to turn on. Shit. Okay, let me be a little bit quicker. So we got our voltage. So we got 207, 203, and 201. So our disconnect to the contactor is fine. Now I'm not really tracing this, but I can tell that this is the one we have issues with. 
So you got 97, 102, and 201. So the middle one, obviously, I, you have the discolored one at the bottom, is the one acting up, right? So the only other thing I, I further go with is I check each one to ground. So we got 117, 30 volts in the middle, and on the left side, uh, 116. So you can tell it's only the middle one. We're not getting the, the contact all the way through and it is pulled in right now. So we're gonna disconnect power. So do that. And I'm gonna go check to see if I have this contactor. And dead in the middle of summer on a hot roof, sunny day, there is nothing that I am more grateful for than my Camel City Mill socks. I wanted to let you guys know that they have a sale going on right now as of this video being live for the next few days. You can go get 30% off your Camel City Mill socks. And believe me, the best socks I've ever owned and if you guys brag about how much you spend on your boots, what do your socks look like? Do they have holes in them? Uh, do they, are they comfortable to be in all day? These are padded. They have these vents to keep you cool in the summer. But they're also, this merino wool also keeps you warm in the winter. It's, it's weird. And they have ankle socks, over the calf, high socks, like different kinds at this point in gray, black, and now white. I actually use these during the work week and now on the weekends because they are the most comfortable socks that I've ever used. So make sure you use my link down below for that exclusive discount. And remember, you can always use code ReliableHVACR10 at checkout for that 10% off discount. And if you buy more, it's actually more cost effective. It brings the price down if you buy a bundle. And everybody that has hit me up after buying them has been you know, super on board and convinced that those are actually the best socks that they've ever tried. Don't miss out on that 4th of July big discount. It's our biggest discount since Black Friday. Those are the two that they said to watch out for. So try it out for yourself. Let me know what you think and we'll get back to the video. All right, we go to our HVAC drawer. I need to restock a little bit. We have our most common one here is from Packard. So we got a three pole, 24 volt coil, cause this is my HVAC drawer. So I do carry a bunch of different ones from Packard there. And then from my walk-ins, I got the uh, 120 and 208 coils. So we're gonna put in this and uh, hopefully just get them by. Hopefully the wiring is not horrible and I don't have to redo any of that. Well, I guess it's kind of easy because it's right at sitting down level. So be careful. This one is the one with a lot of the wires tied into it. So always, I don't care how many years you've been doing it, take a picture and then take one from the side. That way you get every color that you've, you see here. They're pretty distinct, but uh, also you can just go wire for wire and then kind of leave it off to the side. <laughs> Where did I get that one from? See, I almost, I almost screwed up on camera. I uh, was gonna put it on the next terminal. I can't do two things at once, so let me just Get this going. If I don't like how loose the connection is on one of the terminals, I just take a needle nose and kind of squeeze them a little bit and then you get a tighter fit. They are all pretty loose.
All right, so the cool thing is we got a ton of slack. I just got to land it right there. So we're going to cut a good portion off. It's actually not that bad, but, uh, you know, just cut it a few inches back and then investigate. That's nice copper right there. So we're just going to land that real quick. And I'm going to check the contacts on both of the old ones. All right, so... The main reason you don't want to be doing this, this was very common in the past. I don't know if people, I guess people still do it, right? Cause I'm finding it here. Um, the only reason you don't want to do this, I get it. You're trying to insulate it from shorting out. You don't want to run the wire. I get it. But the reason, the main reason is they'll fail a lot quicker because you're basically keeping it from like the metal itself, which oh, it's expanding. I'm going to go change it out. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it is expanding right there. Let me see if I can get a good picture of it. Because I felt it right here and it's already expanded. That's why you don't put it in the box. Um, you're, what you're doing is make it, because these things give off heat. You're making it recirculate its own heat versus it's made out of metal or aluminum on the outside. And it's dissipating that heat through the system, through the, the metal itself. It's best to mount it to metal so that it can release that heat and stuff. When you put it in a box, you're overheating that capacitor. And that is basically, in my opinion, the number one failure for capacitors is heat. I live in Texas, so they're going to pop you the way, but you want to prevent that. So I'm going to go grab a cap and another contactor and just kind of do everything at once so I don't get called back again. It's a Friday. I don't want to test my luck today. All right, so on the, on the Packard, it's two screws that you can take off if you need to inspect the contacts. I'm inspecting the next one. You know, might as well just change them both, right? They're pretty pitted. You got two new contactors in this whole system here. I also took out the old one. I'm just trying to show you on my phone because you can see a little bit clearer. That actually dropped. It's supposed to look like that. That melted and slipped down. So when this was trying to engage, there was no contact even there to, to make contact with. I think it was slightly touching. That's why we got that 30 volts. I don't think I've ever seen that. All right, so I got to mount that capacitor and I have some round ones that were sent out. I need to try and finish these. I prefer the oval ones. And then we have our plumbing strap here. I have a small piece, but I think I left it in the in the garage, the workshop, which is uh, the life of a content creator. I don't want to complain because it's giving me good opportunities, but I always mix up my tools and stuff from having to do all these videos. So then uh, up here is where I keep screws. So we're just gonna grab a couple of 5 sixteenths, some smaller ones. And then uh, I think that's it for now. I'll jump back up there. Oh, I need another contactor. And uh, we'll get to it. All right, fellas, this was much easier because it was just wire connectors. I didn't have to, to land anything on the screws. Just went one by one, put it in. Like I said, plenty of slack on this one. I will give it that. So now we're gonna change out the swollen capacitor. I have the plumbing strap. I just cut it. And essentially these Milwaukee, I carry these Milwaukee ones in here. These are just flush cutters, mostly for tie straps. I don't know. Maybe I've already messed them up, but I've uh, been using them to cut little things like that. I mean, these are pretty cheap. They come in like a pack of two, I believe. So. Very easy to, to carry, very sharp. Been able to cut metal like this really, well, thin metal like this really easy. So just kind of put that together. And I had ordered some and they mistakenly sent me rounds. So you do get, these are seven and a halfs. Uh, yeah, cause that's an aftermarket motor. There's a seven and a half. And uh, they come in rounds as well, if you guys didn't know that. But uh, either way, I just strapped it. We're gonna do the same thing, put it in two wires that's all it takes that's all she wrote
screwed my glove into it. So now we're good. I'm gonna close it up just to be safe and then we're gonna turn the breaker on, make sure everything comes on. Okay, I can hear it. And she's pulling down. Why is this one turning off? Probably have it set for auto off. Uh, we went down from 250 to 150 and right under 400. This is a 410A system, so I'm going to let it run for a little bit and check the temperature. All right, we're getting cooling. So that was basically it. I'll go inside, check with the customer and everything. But yeah, that's going to do it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really am loving this MPMX by Vito Pro Pack. I have my probes for quick checks. I got a little compact meter that does whatever I need for contactors, thermostats, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some all-in-one or multi-tools as far as screwdrivers, pliers, strippers, and uh, a knife. I have a bunch of wire nuts and stuff in this section, a brush to clean stuff. And then these uh, Klein multi-bit sockets have been great. So I just keep one in every bag now. And it's super easy. You put it in your pocket, you clip it to your belt, a la Jake style. Uh, Kraus kind of got that from him because I can't keep it in my back pocket. It, it's just, it's, it's too heavy for that. But for right here, walking up, if it swings around too much, just hold on to it, walk up to the ladder, and it's great for the ladder. I just have, if I need to drill something like today, carry the drill on the other side and the pouch, come up the ladder, and it does like, I've been finding myself going to this like 90% of the time. And my, my secondary bag now is the SPMC. And then my uh, install bag for all of the big stuff is the uh, Tech Pack MC Wheeler, which has been great for install. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy, how about you like and subscribe because that is the easiest way to support your favorite content creator, your favorite HVAC content creator, or any of the ones that you watch. Because it's not easy, it's hot. Guys, stay hydrated, stay safe. Um, it's not easy filming this stuff and talking and getting into everything with the sun beating down on you. So hopefully you guys are, are doing good out there. Uh, like I said, stay safe in the summer. We are at a cool 55 degrees. I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna clean up my trash, throw everything down. I'll see you guys next time. All right, so putting, every, putting everything away. I know this is not the most accurate, but Get yourself an infrared. This is just the most compact one that I've seen, but you can also use a thermal imager or any of the other ones that are like multi-use that has a laser thermal gun on it. So I can go inside and kind of show the customer like, hey, your unit's working without getting up on the ladder, even though I checked it on the roof.